Okay, so we have DeepSeek on the right here, which is a Chinese-founded artificial intelligence company, and they just recently released DeepThink R1, which is their advanced reasoning model. And then, of course, here on the left, we have ChatGPT, and we're going to be testing O1, their advanced reasoning model. And we're going to just use a quantitative reasoning uh, question. This is something you would see on the SAT, maybe, or if you've taken the GMAT, you would definitely see this question on there. And so... Um, we're going to submit that, and I've made one request to say, please provide your answers and show your work. And so you can see now that the, the machines or the models are saying that they're thinking. And you can see what their chain of thought here it says the ChatGPT01 thought for four minutes or four seconds, I'm sorry, and then goes through its whole entire process here. We can see DeepSeek, which appears to go into a much more in depth chain of thought here. And what's interesting is that you'll see where it's talking and revealing what its, it's thought process is. And so there's a big debate on whether you consider this to be thinking or not or reasoning by a machine. But okay, let's see. Uh, there's a problem and it talks about the problem. Hmm. I always love that they say, hmm. So first I need to figure out how much distance it is. Now both trains, blah, 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 blah. And so this is a fairly long thread in terms of what its output is. And so if we just want to test this, if you're curious, on how much the output is. Let's just actually put this inside. And so we're just gonna go into word counter here and I'm gonna put DeepSeek has 1,071 characters and O1 has 1,768 characters. All right, so we just wanna see, so if I copy this, it's only gonna give me O1, but if we actually take the entire process shown here, just so you can see how many characters, 7,397 characters on the output there. It's really interesting. And so did they get the answers right? And so the answers, they're equally as close. And so short answers, the same are both equally close. So that's the right answer for both of them. And so let's see if we can make this a little interesting and say, okay, can you provide for me the Python code that illustrates this problem and I want you to use colors that represent teams for its respective city. And so that's going to go in there. We're going to put that in GPT and then we're going to put that in DeepThink and we're going to submit and see what kind of Python code we get. And then we're going to run this inside of our development environment and see what we get. And so you can see here DeepThink is thinking and I already see that it's doing Boston and San Francisco. I already saw the Celtics. Uh, Boston has sports teams like the Red Sox, the Celtics and the Bruins. San Francisco has the Giants, orange and black, and the 49ers, red and gold. And so it's giving me the hex code. And then it's putting together the Python. It's still thinking. And OK, here's our Python code. Um, and so interestingly enough, uh, 01 is doing the same. And it puts together our Python code. And so here, uh, DeepSeek has completed. 01 is still thinking. And so we'll let 01 complete this. And then we'll run this in our Python code to see what we get here. All right, so I actually just let it run just so you guys get a real-time idea of how much O1 spent. All right, so we're gonna copy our GPT-4 code and we're gonna put that in GPT-4. And then we're gonna go and copy our DeepSeek. I'm gonna put that in DeepSeek. And then we're just gonna run GPT now, we're gonna see. And so one of the things that you could probably do, and so if you guys are familiar with Cursor, right? For those of you who are familiar with Cursor, you can just, and so I, I try to get into a habit of just talking to my workstation and saying, hey, can you run GPT? I'm on a MacBook. Can you run the GPT script for me? Uh, and then it goes and then it runs it. All right. And so you'll see right here, this is GPT, what it created. Um, and <laughs> I'm by no means like any kind of physicist or... <laughs> mathematician, but I would say that, I gotta even remember what the question was. Can you run the deep seek script for me, please? And then we'll run deep seek and there it is, and it runs it. And here's what we get for deep seek. And so you can see two very different iterations of what the problem was. And I think this is probably more representative of of the problem and asking the question. And interesting enough, the colors that were used. And so these are the two that we're using. Remember, our prompt 
specifically asked them to illustrate this problem. Um, below is a concise Python script that illustrates trains traveling toward each other from Boston to San Francisco, 2,000 miles. We'll use matplotlib animation showing the, and so, okay. And then here's the code generate showing a Boston train progress in navy blue and a San Francisco train progress in orange. The vertical dash line marks the meeting time. And so that right there is what, so if we look at our two, and so they did, I mean, it followed what the prompt was that they were saying they were gonna do, right? So it did what it said it was gonna do, um, but it's just interesting. So I hope this really illustrates how these large language models won so you can see this. And I think the next one we'll do is I'll actually have a front end component developed. Let's do a lean model canvas and then ask this to create a front end landing page for us. But let me know if you guys have any questions and if you like this kind of content, please give us a follow. You can also hit me up on Substack and LinkedIn, and I have a newsletter as well. There's also a prompt library in Rudy. All of this is in the link in my bio if you guys want to check this out. And so thank you very much for watching. Peace.